All right, y'all, so after surviving the attack by the swarm of bees and knowing that God, the ancestors, and the universe, because I believe in all three, saved me, I started reflecting over the past two days on the things that I needed to do and the lessons that I need to take from this. I'd like to share those things with you. So I'll start off with the actions that I've taken. So the first action was to ensure that my will and my estate plan are not only in place, but that they're clear to my loved ones, family and beneficiaries. So I've spoken to my brother and my wife to make sure that we're all clear on how the process would need to go should something happen to me. And also wanna make sure that the second action is to provide the information that my wife would need to be able to easily claim things like my life insurance policy, get access to my retirement plans and savings account and the like. Third action is to have a conversation with my brother about making sure that he and the executor of my estate begin communication. So should something happen to me, it will be easy for the two of them to communicate, especially since he's in Sierra Leone and the executive would be in the United States most likely. Fourth action is actually to take a step back and to allow myself the space and the time to give my body time to rest. The surge of adrenaline, the surge of adrenaline was real and the use of that adrenaline actually is exhausting. So I feel tired and Today, I plan to completely, completely relax and be a couch potato for the entire day. Just let my body nap what it needs to and to recuperate fully. And the fifth action I took was to actually take precaution because later I discovered that there was more to that attack in terms of injuries or cuts and the likes on my body than I'd realized. So, for example, on my head, I feel quite a number of bumps, which I'm sure are the bee stings because the stingers will still be there. And I uh, just wanted to make sure that on Monday, I, when I go see my physio, that we'll, we'll talk about what needs to happen beyond just a regular session. If I need to go to the hospital or go see my doctor, just to make sure that from a health point of view that I'm okay because I, I could only see one of the stings from the six initial stings that I could find and stingers, I should say, so I took that out. But the other five, I know where they are, but I just can't reach them, and I've left them for now. And the lessons that I've learned are more philosophical lessons. So the first lesson is this notion that truly, we can plan all we like for things, but sometimes the thing that you cannot even imagine is going to be what happens. So who would expect to be attacked by a swarm of bees on a middle school, high school track before eight o'clock on a Thursday morning on any given week? But that's exactly what happened and completely unprovoked. And for the bees themselves, I'm sure something disturbed them. That's why they were where they were. But unfortunately, I was exactly at the wrong place at exactly the wrong time. And I... You know, I almost paid a dear price, but I was able to escape. And for some of you, you may be wondering, like, why does he keep saying, like, he almost died? I mean, okay, like, a uh, attack by a swarm of bees can be potentially serious, but it's not that serious. But in my case, I've been in a situation where I've been rehabbing a knee from an injury f f since November of last year. And it was this particular situation that... Uh, allowed the knee, I think, to show that it was completely, completely healed because there had been some niggly challenges along the way. So I'm just deeply grateful that that hard pivot that broke the foam on my shoe didn't do damage to the knee. It seemed to actually have like set the knee and strengthened it tremendously. But had that not happened, I would not have been able to run to get away from those bees. And the only thing those bees would have done because that was the mode that they were in was to sting me each and every last one of them. I don't know how many there were. Like I said, I counted at least 20 that were in the car with me. So I got to imagine there were much more because it was a small portion of the, the swarm that could enter into the car 
when I finally was able to get into the car and escape the swamp. So that's why I feel that that was something that was so close, right? So philosophically, then that tells me that tomorrow, again, is not guaranteed nor promised. So I must make sure that the things that are coming through me, because I now feel often that I'm a vessel, like ideas are pouring through me, thoughts, knowledge, whatever you want to call it, coming through me. I must get it out. I must act on it because it's possible that tomorrow I may not be here, right? And I don't say that to be morbid. I just say that to be realistic. It actually reminds me of a show I used to watch when I was living and working in Lomé, Togo. Um, and, you know, I, was, I had a subscription to cable TV, but it was French. And although my French is decent, watching French TV the entire day is not something that's easy to do. Long story short, there was one particular channel that would play like one or two English shows. And the one show that they kept showing in English was called 10,000 Ways to Die. And I watched this show so many times where I just would see so many different ways that people die. And when that swarm was attacking me, I realized that if I didn't get to that car, it could be like an episode of that particular show. But coming back to the more philosophical lessons, another key philosophical lesson for me is that we always try to teach and train people to plan for the worst and hope for the best. At least that's one of my mantras. And that's fantastic. It's also equally important for all of us to train ourselves, our minds, and our bodies to be solution-oriented. So when life does throw you that curveball that you cannot even imagine, or that black swan event that you cannot even think logically and plan logically for, you still got to find a way to act in the moment and find ways that act as, that would be helpful. And in this case, that would preserve whatever it is that's important to you. And I was very fortunate that the idea came to me immediately to get to the car. So let me pause here, y'all. I've shared a lot in this format of shorts and then this long form video to share with you the lessons that I've learned. But I'm deeply curious about situations you've experienced. Have you been in a situation where you have found something to happen completely unexpectedly and you had to react? If so, drop me a comment or two. Let me know what was the situation. How did you react? And um, what lessons did you take from it? If you found this video to be helpful, uh, please like the video and like the shorts. If you like content like this and want me to do more, let me know. Drop me comments to let me know. And if you think others would benefit from this video, please share. If you like the channel, please subscribe. All right, y'all. Thank you. See you soon.